Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so for a couple of years now, uh, we are having a, a research project at the Klaipeda University, uh, uh, which, uh, which is uh, the main purpose of it is to uh, identify and uh, uh, study the early Holocene sites, uh, which is now submerged in the Baltic in the Baltic Sea waters, and uh, on the coast as well. So. Uh, uh, as you will see later, we have some issues in that area of research. But uh, if you are interested in some case of this uh, uh, research, of these studies, you can just search this, uh, just type in, uh, in the research gate search uh, function this name and you will find some updates and information about this project. And uh, I try to keep it updated every time. Uh, if he, if he, if we have something new, okay. So uh, the re research area is, uh, as you can see, is a coastal part of Lithuania, uh, and uh, it's a problematic part because uh, in the inland part, especially in the southern and the southeastern part, and in the western area, further back to the uh, from the coast. We have lots of Stone Age sites, uh, uh, Mesolithic burials, uh, Mesolithic settlements, and uh, other stuff that is it, it is very rich in flint, bone, antlers, and so on. Yeah, but the coast is not so rich in Mesolithic sites. So today I want you to present uh, three main uh, sites, uh, which is here uh, marked by uh, black dots. Uh, uh, which is represents lithics, bones, and antlers. Uh, one side uh, represents only lithics. Uh, it's the newly excavated one. And other two sites uh, are from uh, older collections. Uh, and they represent only uh, osseous material. Uh, okay. So, but first of all, I would like to uh, make some glimpse into the uh, underwater stuff that we have. And uh, uh, we have like uh, some submerged forest areas in, in different sea areas. You can see RF uh, uh, I, RF uh, 2, 3. In those parts, we have uh, mainly pine trees, submerged pine trees, what we already detected. As you can see, some ex examples are here. Uh, mainly, it's a big trunks and logs, and we sampled them. Uh, we have even found some uh, files uh, driven in, into the seabed, which is dated, as you can see, in the mid of uh, uh, 8th millennium uh, BC. And uh, we have, uh, like, uh, well, these dates are older now, and they are not from AMS dating labs, so I just made a compilation of our uh, old dates from the uh, trees, submerged trees, and as you can see, lots of them goes to the Pre-boreal boreal times, and uh, last year, uh, uh, with the collaboration between German, uh, Lithuanian, Latvian, and Belarusian uh, archaeologists, uh, we made a presentation in, at last year's EAA about uh, the dating of uh, TXs, and we have this one TX from the uh, one of the submerged places in the Baltic Sea waters. So. Uh, and we have now, uh, this is an uh, old TAXS that is dated in Lithuania, and I think we have, not at least now, we have no more TAXS, but this TAX, uh, which is in red uh, square, uh, is one of the earliest uh, in the whole Lithuania, uh, which is from the uh, submerged area. Okay, so the first site that uh, I want you to represent is the uh, Oktumalamo, uh, which is in the southern part of the uh, coastal Lithuania. It was discovered, uh, uh, the Stone Age sites there was discovered in uh, 2004, uh, and it was excavated, but uh, uh, it was like rescue excavations, you know, and the material, material was never delivered to the museum, and we hadn't know any uh, information about it until 2013. So when we had that information, we already knew that this site is the most earliest one in the whole Eastern Baltic coast. 
So this is the current view of uh, the island, now island, uh, uh, that uh, contains three sites. Uh, you can see one, two, and three. Uh, as you can see, this uh, area is in the peat extraction fields. And uh, it's, we are very lucky that uh, it's not destroyed. And uh, we have a good opportunity to study it. Uh, and uh, we made excavations in 20, last year in 2018 in summer. And now uh, this year we made excavations in 2019. So I will try to represent the, the newest stuff that we have now. But re research is still ongoing and uh, some other ideas will come up later, I think. So yeah, so this is the main uh, tools from uh, those sites. Uh, this this uh, lithics are from whole three sites, it's combined. And uh, as you can see in the uh, left uh, corner, this is uh, uh, excavations, uh, material from excavations in 2004. And according to that material, it, uh, the site was, uh, uh, the sites actually was identified as the possible Arensburgian site. I'm not sure why. Uh, but uh, uh, the number one, uh, if you uh, can notice in the uh, bottom left, uh, is a fragment of a tank point. So according to this, uh, the previous, previous studies uh, said that it's probably Arendsburgian. But uh, nope, uh, this is actually a Svidarian uh, fragment. Yeah, so, uh, and in 2018 we uh, managed to find more flints uh, because you know this area is non non flinty area, so it's uh, this site contains not much flint, but uh, we managed to find something, and we even managed to find two points. One, as you can see here, is a uh, uh, almost a complete uh, full point of the Svidarian uh, technology, and the, the next one is only a tank fragment, but we already know that it's a Sfiderian as well. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, the main tool kit uh, from the 2018. And uh, this is from the 2019, what we have here. And uh, the excavations just confirmed that we are dealing with Sfiderians, because as you can see, uh, the number two, we have a small Sfiderian point, and maybe the number one it could be the Sudarian point as well, but we are not sure yet. So uh, uh, the flint, uh, if we uh, combine 2019 and 2018 uh, stuff, uh, consists about uh, 150 flints only. But uh, we have lots of blades, you know, very quite legural blades, and uh, we have. Uh, actually only one flint uh, core, this is number 13. It's a, an opposite uh, platform uh, core. But it's very interesting that some blades uh, are very typical to the pulley technology, which, uh, but to the technology that later pulley probably used, because we found very regular blades there especially. And maybe some prototypes we uh, have here as well. And what is the most interesting thing, according to the geological part of those of that island of those sites, uh, the island was uh, uh, the sea level. Uh, sorry, no sea level, but lake level uh, was high enough that uh, uh, the water just overcame the island. And uh, according to the data from 19th century, even. The whole hill in that place was uh, overgrown by peat on the surface, and only just uh, in the deeper layers there was uh, sand. So probably, uh, in my opinion, it could be the case. Of course, we have to make some more uh, research, but it could be the case that we are dealing with the uh, short and uh, uh, exclusively exclusively uh, Svidarian site. It's not a mixed site, in my opinion, yet. Yeah. So according uh, to the archaeological data, we also have lots of uh, 
uh, non-flint rocks and uh, a big part uh, of its debitage, like uh, 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 cores, granite cores, and the hammer stones, net sinkers, uh, lot, uh, blades, uh, and especially flakes. And uh, if we look closer into the statistical point uh, of view, so you can see that uh, only by several, by four percent, flint material overcomes the non-flint uh, material. So uh, we are uh, actually we are making uh, now uh, the chemical analysis of flint in that uh, from those sites and we will compare it uh, with the outcrops analysis in the uh, Namunas Basin with the Cretaceous flint from uh, Lithuania and Belarus. And we'll see if probably, yeah, it could be that the flint came from there, but who knows? Yeah, and uh, if you look into the uh, non-flint uh, uh, material uh, and rocks, uh, we see that uh, granite dominates uh, the whole assemblage. Yeah. And uh, the next site is a smelter site. Uh, it, uh, this uh, assemblage of uh, bones and uh, antlers was found in 1974 and delivered to the museum. It was excavated in the uh, pit area that is now destroyed by the uh, constructions of uh, shipyards. And as you can see, we have uh, lots of uh, uh, tools, uh, which consists of axes, uh, alls, so pressure flakers, and so on, and even some amber. Uh, the detailed study of uh, those, uh, 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 this assemblage was uh, published in 2015 by Gitis Pilichowskis in Estonian Journal of Archaeology, you can find it there. Uh, however, I want to, uh, uh, to take part into some two, only two tools from this assemblage, uh, which is uh, axis, and I wanted to, to show you and uh, to talk about its decorations. Uh, yeah, the first one, as you can see, is a uh, antler axe uh, or hoe. I'm not sure the blade part uh, is uh, uh, considered as uh, broke, uh, and. Uh, it has a special way of decoration, you know, like removing, removing uh, the cortex, and that way it, the decoration was given. I know the exact uh, 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 similarities from uh, uh, Strobe Agede in uh, Denmark. I saw some in the Copenhagen in the National Museum, so it's very interesting uh, that we have some uh, analogies here in Lithuania. And the next one is, as you can see, the antler eggs as well, but uh, this is a bad example of the museum stuff. Uh, we have a like a lines decoration, the regular lines decoration by the uh, base part of the antler. And if you look uh, into the uh, microscopical view of the decoration itself, we see some interesting stuff in uh, technological point of view. Uh, what's, uh, of, of course, uh, the whole technology consisted of cutting uh, by flint knife, uh, by flint uh, boring, because we uh, detected, detected lots of uh, uh, rocks uh, traces there, sharp rocks traces there. And of course, the last stage was the polishing into like a so softer rock, like sandstone or, or maybe other one. But what's uh, the interesting point is that, uh, as you can see, uh, the top left uh, uh, photo, it, uh, in one part it has like uh, uh, oblong pit in impressions. So I'm not sure if it's uh, from, uh, uh, maybe from antler, uh, natural or, or not, so it's very, uh, interesting, and uh, who knows what's uh, what? Uh, it's not uh, like a, what's uh, sorry, uh, what tool was used uh, for decorating it? Uh, we have no idea yet, and if it's a decoration at all, we are not sure. So, uh, and the other one, it's just like a simple lines, uh, which was made not by one cutting but several uh, times cuts. 
and it was polished as well later after the uh, tool was completed. And the last site that I want to show you today, uh, which has a, a assemblage of antlers and bones, is a Palanga site, which has also a, one of those data T axes. Uh, uh, the site was also published uh, in 2015 by Gitis Pilichowskas, and it has also some uh, elements of decoration on, on tools, and especially the conical bone point, which has uh, cross and net patterns of decoration here. So we have lots of, uh, you know, uh, those conical points, bone points in Lithuania. But if you look closer into the dating of the site, uh, yeah, uh, we see that the site dates like in the middle and at the end of the fifth millennium Cal BC. Uh, sorry, I haven't shown you probably, but uh, this site is earlier by the dates of those uh, two tools. Uh, and of course, we made a, a more sampling of tools, especially decorated tools, and we sent them to the lab, but we are still waiting for the results to come. Uh, yeah, so my point is that uh, if we trust those dates, uh, this is the first example of uh, that decoration on uh, that tool type in Lithuania. Later, we have uh, the continuity of uh, this tool type and decoration in Eastern Lithuania, and uh, we have a, like a uh, continuity, especially in the late Neolithic, uh, at the end of uh, uh, free millennium Cal BC. Yeah, and if you look closer into the decoration part, we see that for the decorating of uh, that tool, like three or, or two tools at least was used uh, because uh, we see that is difference in lines, uh, in the width of lines. So it makes uh, sense that probably the upper part was decorated by a different tool and the lower part was decorated by a much smaller tool. And now to conclude, uh, first of all, I would like to express that as you can see, we have great lack of uh, data from uh, late Paleolithic and Mesolithic uh, in the coastal part of Lithuania. But we have much potential for underwater studies there. And I think that lots of treasures are submerged now. And we just have to make a research. And uh, the earliest example of a hunter-gatherer site uh, in uh, that area is that Oxtumala Moor. Uh, that uh, is now considered as the Svidarian sites. Yeah, and uh, in my opinion, it has no mixed material here from other periods, from later Mesolithic or, or Neolithic even. And uh, we see that uh, the flint was uh, uh, introduced probably into that area from southern Lithuania, but we are not sure. We are making some uh, research later. And uh, we see that in the Mesolithic collections that we have, the main tools was made of anther and bones and uh, less flint because we have actually no flint of Mesolithic, no microliths and other typical Mesolithic uh, toolkit in the coastal part of Lithuania. So, and uh, currently we have uh, earliest Mesolithic uh, decorations there in Lithuania, in the coastal part of Lithuania. So thank you very much.